Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and this is a Heal Heat Top 10. Topic of this Top 10, the Top 10 Worst Heel Turns in Wrestling. And basically by the worst we mean stuff that just didn't work, stuff that had little impact, made booking decisions seem really stupid at the time, or over time, as we look back, you realize how bad of an idea it was. With that being said, let's roll right into it with our number 10. And this isn't one specific term, we just lumped them into one whole thing. And that's the big show, aka the giant, every single heel turn. If we did a, a list of every of the worst face turns, this would also be on that list as well. Nothing against the Big Show or the Giant, either way. I think he's a good wrestler. I think he's a solid wrestler. And, uh, you know, with the Stone Cold podcast where he talked about the reason he turned so much is he could be used in either role, and I agree with that. I think that's absolutely correct. The reason I put his turns on here, though, is he's gone back and forth so much that there's literally no pop, no heat, nothing for it. If he turns face, a lot of times you didn't even realize he was heel. And vice versa, if he turns heel, you didn't realize he was face. And the, the results over the years, the first couple times he did in WCW, where they flip-flopped him too. It's not just WWE. The returns for the first couple were, you know, pretty decent. Then after, you know, four or five times, two or three times a year, every time you do it, it gets less and less impressive, and that's what we have here. Basically, the overused turn in the guy. What could have been a once-in-a-generation elite-type special athlete, kind of like a Brock Lesnar or Andre the Giant of the past, kind of got made into just another guy which really is no fault of his own. He's a talented wrestler, a really talented worker, a guy that could get over in any position, which again is why they do this so much. But just the amount of times they did it kind of ruined anything. He's a guy that's probably going to go into the WWE Hall of Fame, but he should be remembered as one of the top attractions of all time, along with like I said, Andre the Giant, Brock Lesnar, somewhere in that line, Undertaker, guys of that nature, but he's not going to be because of this. That being said, rolling into our number nine, Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 17. Now, don't get me wrong, his heel turn and the Stone Cold character afterwards, I think it was a nice addition to his character. I think some of his funniest stuff happened during this time with him and McMahon and uh, Angle. The thing is, there was no reason to ever turn him. He was still just as hot as he ever was. This guy was literally, basically gave the WWE a stamp saying, here, print some money. Keep printing the money. It made no sense for him to team up with McMahon. It made no sense for him to ever turn heel. It made no sense. He didn't need Vince to beat The Rock. It had been done before. He had beaten The Rock before. So, with all that, it kind of feels like it was forced, and it kind of feels like it was unnecessary. That's why it's here. I mean, it's not the worst of all time, but... When you sit back and realize that they've never pulled the trigger on, uh, as of this taping, of turning John Cena fully heel, 
you realize the marketing and money that they left on the table doing that with Austin. Even if it only took him from 100% of what he would have sold to 90% of what he would have sold, we're talking about $1 million to 900000 which is a huge jump. You know, take 10% off of your check, whatever job you do. That's going to be a significant difference. And to me, it just feels like there was money left on the table. He should have never... The Austin character probably should have never turned face. I mean, he already acted as a heel, as a face, so I don't get it. Now, our number eight. This will probably come up a couple times, but first, the one I want to mention here is Michael Cole as a heel announcer be leading up to WrestleMania 27 and through WrestleMania 27. This was so bad and so stupid. Ah. It was painful watching Monday Night Raw at the, at the time with Michael Cole and his heel persona. I mean, it was terrible. He, was, he wasn't he was good at it. Um, it was annoying. And I know heels are supposed to be annoying and get you mad at them, but this was the wrong kind of annoying. This was a I really don't want to watch that show kind of annoying. The really bad part about it is, is when history shook looks back at the record books, the only WrestleMania match that Jerry the King Lawler, one of the best wrestlers of all time, has is against this crappy Michael Cole character. Luckily, they phased out of it shortly after WrestleMania, because uh, the guy was unbearable. I mean, you see glimpses of it every now and again. He kind of goes back into it a bit, but not nowhere near how terrible it was then. I mean, he would go on NXT when it was uh, still the game show portion, and he would rip all the girls on NXT and talk about how boring it was. You're literally not putting over your next generation of talent, but I don't know. To me, it was boring and stupid, and I just didn't like it. Now, our number seven, Rikishi. Rikishi turning and... I did it for The Rock. Reason for him running over Stone Cold or him being the guy behind running over Stone Cold. It seemed to me like they had a gimmick. They didn't know who to give it to. They were going to give it to a shock factor and gave it to Rikishi. Now, Rikishi was never going to be the guy. I mean, let's face it, folks. He was never going to be The Rock. He was never going to be Stone Cold. But he was a good act, he was a fun act, he was something that the crowd got into, they danced along with, cheered with him, were happy for all his moves, a stink face, of course. It just kind of felt forced, it felt like they tried to make a main eventer out of him, and, and kudos for them for trying that. But it just feels like it was a wrong decision. I feel like they could have picked somebody else to be the driver of the car, I feel like it derailed Rikishi going forward. He never quite became as popular as he was before this. And to me, I just thought the whole thing was a little bit... Like I said, it felt forced. It felt like they had a gimmick. They didn't know what to do with it. And they stuck it on him. Now coming up next, our number six. Sting turning heel on Hulk Hogan in uh, late 99 in WCW. Now, here we have Sting, the one true defender of WCW, the guy that stood up to the NWO and Hulk Hogan shenanigans, through thick and thin, even had the little, you know, NWO wolf pack, which was kind of a face group, Sting, he always stood up for WCW. Hogan turns face, so for shock value... Sting's going to turn heel. It made zero sense. You had 12 years of Sting being the flag bearer. Still to this day, when you think of WCW, you think of Sting. You think of him as being the guy, the face of the company. But for whatever reason, whether it be Hogan's ego, whether they thought it might pop the rating, who knows? They decided to turn Sting heel 
I'm not going to say it's a, the the decision to put a nail in the coffin of WCW, but it sure didn't help him either. It was terrible. No one wanted to see a heel sting. No one wants to see a heel sting still. Even when they did it in TNA, no one wanted to see Sting as a heel. Sting, like I said, with Steve Austin and uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and a few other guys should have always been a face character. And I know Stone Cold, before he was Stone Cold, was a heel, and that was fantastic work. But he's one of the guys that they should have just left alone, let him be Sting, let him be the paragon of virtue, but they did. Again, it's WCW. I mean, what more do I have to say, really? Now, our number five is a very similar situation that happened about ten years earlier. Well, about six years earlier, actually. That's Tatanka turning heel and joining the Million Dollar Corporation. This is another case, much like Rikishi, where we had a guy who had a solid fan base, a solid backing, uh, was a guy that I thought that they could have pushed and made into a main eventer eventually. I really enjoyed his work. I liked Tatanka. I liked the gimmick. I liked his style. They turn him heel instead of in a... They have a, a thing going where Lex Luger supposedly joined the Million Dollar Corporation. But it ends up being Tatanka. And he never quite, much like Rikishi, he never quite got back to where he was before the Million Dollar Corporation. I don't even think he lasted after that. I think he got fired while he was still in the Million Dollar Corporation. It was another case of a character and a wrestler that I think they could have done more with if they just left well enough alone. The fans seemed to like him um, when I would go to shows at that time. Uh, fans seemed to cheer for Tatanka. Kids seemed to wear Tatanka t-shirts. Kids wanted the Tatanka toy. I mean, to me, it was just another thing where they derailed a promising career with making a silly decision that I think could have been avoided. Now, number four is another one that baffles me. The Road Warriors turning on Sting in 1998, in a, in, famously in a six-man tag against the Varsity Club. They attack Sting. For the life of me, much like Steve Austin that I mentioned before, we have the Road Warriors in the 80s at the height of their popularity. And you turn them heel. I, I don't get it. It does not make sense. They were selling t-shirts. They were selling out arenas. The Road Warriors were main eventing shows when Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes are the world champions. You got the Road Warriors main eventing. The tag champions. It made little to no sense. The fans didn't want it. The fans didn't want to see the, the Road Warriors heel. They started off heel. The fans turned them face. The fans wanted to cheer these guys. Give them what they want. It goes back to the old Kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. They didn't grow stale. It wasn't time. You didn't beat the arc. You just beat a dead horse, basically. And this start started a whole chain reaction of through Sting's career, having his friends turn on him, whether it be Luger, whether it be the Road Warriors... Uh, the Horseman, when he joined them, who would have thought the Horseman would turn on Sting? Basically, everybody Sting became friends with eventually turned on him, which is really weird. They continued to go down that route to try and get people heat. Just another turn that didn't make any sense to me. Now our number three. Luckily, this one was short-lived. It only lasted about three weeks. But how bad it was and how bad it could have been is why it's up here so far. And that's Daniel Bryan joining the Wyatt family. You took your biggest star, whether you wanted him to be or not, and you tried to force him to go heel so the fans would stop cheering for him because you wanted Dave Batista to be the champion at WrestleMania, which, no knock on Dave Batista, I'm a big Batista fan. The whole world, the entire wrestling world, every fan, 
wanted to see Daniel Bryan finally make it to the top. You know what do you do? You make him a Wyatt family member. Luckily, the backlash was so severe that they decided after, I think it was three weeks, to turn him back face. I don't know if that was the plan all along. It really didn't seem like it was. It seemed like they kind of had to react to some things, basically put him in the match at WrestleMania. I don't think that was the plan for him to get into the main event. I think it was going to be what it was. The Evolution guys going up against each other. But, I don't know why they thought it was something they could do. I don't know what, what gave them this idea. But, obviously, still thinking of it now, it's such a bad idea with the most over guy that you've had in probably a decade, if not more. Now, our number two. Much akin to the situation... Bill Goldberg turned it heel in 2000 in WCW. That's another one of those characters like Steve Austin, like Sting that I mentioned, that should have never been a heel. As much as I don't like Goldberg as a wrestler, he never was my taste. I never enjoyed his work. He was over. He was over like almost nobody could be. There, I mean, there was a time where it was Austin, Rock... And uh, Goldberg were the three be biggest guys in wrestling. To turn him heel, to join with Bischoff and uh, Russo at the time, made no sense at all. Again, you had a guy that was licensed to print money. Kids were wearing Goldberg t-shirts, buying Goldberg wrestling buddies, buying Goldberg little, ma little uh, matchbox cars, little monster trucks... He was on everything. Cups. That cups with Goldberg. Banners. Anything you could think of, Goldberg was selling. They were selling Goldberg temporary tattoos. People were going and getting the Goldberg tattoo. That's how big he was. It made absolutely no sense. It's another one of those things. It's probably one of the reasons why WCW is no longer around. Now, before we get into our number one... We have a thing we do here at Heel Heat called the best of the rest. Basically, this is all the things that were considered for the list but didn't quite make it. First up, in no specific order, the two times that they tried to turn Jim Ross heel. Uh, both were coming off of bouts with Bell, Bell's Palsy. The first time he brought in the fake Razor and Diesel. The second time he brought back with him Dr. Death Steve Williams as his bodyguard. They set up a second announce table in front of the original announce table. It's JR. Everybody loves JR. No one's going to boo him. No one wants to see him as a heel. Again, made little to no sense. Next up, we have Trish. Trish Stratus turning on Chris Jericho. To join up with Christian at, I forget what WrestleMania it was, but someone someone put it in the comments down here. They did a whole like love triangle thing. It was dumb, it was stupid, it was a bad way to portray Trish, who's one of your main women stars at the time. I don't know why they did it, but they did, so as we say, another bad decision by the WWE. Now, before we go on to our number one, if I put, if you think I put something too high, put someone down too low, left something off the list altogether, let me know what you think. Put it down here in the comments. Make sure you hit like and share and all that other good stuff while you do this. Get this out here. And last but not least, our number one of the worst heel turns in the history of wrestling, AJ Styles joining Fortune, and basically turning him into the Nature Boy AJ Styles. This, to me, is the whole TNA in a nutshell. You have a guy who we can see now that it's in the WWE, and even when he was in New Japan, he can be made the focal point of your company, 
yet you decide to do something as stupid as trying to fit the squarest of square pegs into a round hole. AJ Styles the person and Ric Flair the person are as different as you could possibly be. Yet for someone in TNA management they decided AJ Styles would make a great Ric Flair. No. No he wouldn't. This was terrible. It was dumb. I hated it. Uh, it's yet it's like I said, it's systematic of what TNA did. They always seem to be one step off of being doing something great. And they had a guy. It's they had the guy. They had AJ Styles. It's not the last two years that AJ Styles has been one of the best wrestlers in the world. It's the last decade and a half. TNA had him. They could have used him and marketed him and made him the sting of TNA, which he is. He's the, the flagship. A lot of dumb booking decisions with him, putting over a lot of the WWE, re WWE rejects over him. And a lot of stuff just like that soured his run in TNA and took a guy that could have really been something extra special and made him something not so much. But to me, that's what I think the worst heel turn in wrestling is. I think it had the wor the least amount of impact. I think it had the most amount of negative impact on a company that needed positive impact on it. And it had a bad impact on his career. But basically, that's all I have to say on this. My name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.